I'm going to record since you're starting to show from here. I'll record it that way. The video sees where you're going. Gotcha. Professor Jones, do you like to start your class with saying, uh, what does he say he does? It's like his famous catchphrase. <laughs> I didn't know I had a catchphrase to start the you class. Start, you start every single video the same. Uh, you do like, uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> I think that's what. Oh, that's because they're all making a ruckus and they ain't settling down. <laughs> you get it's not four forty five yet. You wait, you'll see like four forty six, four forty seven. Right. Uh, they're straggling in a couple minutes late. Like LD will be talking to Max. And, um, um, heard that LD? He came in just in time too for you to hear that. And you gotta, I gotta, you gotta, you gotta settle down the troops. Yeah. 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 This is good stuff, by the way. Look, look this up. Learn it. Yeah. Uh, practice it. It's good stuff. You're not gonna, you're not gonna stop seeing this anytime soon. The service goes on. I bought it. I bought it for the tablet aspect. Now let's see if we can. Are there any labs on this? Labs? Yeah. Yeah. There's a. Uh, the, the last minute, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, if it comes on leak code, then it comes on interviews, you know? Okay. Like, uh, no, that's it's kind of kind of something to go on. Let's see here. Yeah, all you can do is read the whole thing. Yeah, it's, bro, it's not my fault. You don't know how to read. I mean, bro, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> you, read, you read the first paragraph. That's what you did. He said, no class? Okay, all right. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I'm not going to be there? Okay, all right. I'll see you guys. There's class. Like, I'm going to be teaching. Yeah, I guess I'm going to be teaching. So I'm going to teach. So, uh, are we actually learning today? I don't know. Pepecito right here. Pepecito. <laughs> it's just an well, extended I'm version. Kidding. What happened? No, I'm just kidding. I just $16. What's up, guys? Name? 16 bucks yeah, an hour. You guys can leave a tip on the way out. I mean, if you feel that bad. What do you mean, bro? All right. I can do a gift card at Buffalo Wild. <laughs> <laughs> How long is your class going to be? Probably around the same time because I have my SI right immediately after. Hey man, I get paid by the hour, right? The longer I stay here, the better I get paid. Come on, Jones check. No, no. So you get paid for this hour too? Yeah. Does he give you like your his number? He he would earn. No. No, that's good. He doesn't. He gets paid on salary, bro. He doesn't get paid on. Jones divided by three sixty-five. Why? He did his. He did his part. I'm not giving him one day of my wages for his hour and 15 minutes worth of... He has a whole-ass master's degree, bro. He, he kind of earned his right here. Yeah, just, you know? just divide. Oh, right, you're right. Yeah. Because the salary is half, right? No. <laughs> I get half the salary for the one class that I teach? Bro. No. I'm, I'm fine. I'm still getting paid. All right. He does. He was. I asked him if he wanted to do this yeah, bro, we can as that. teaching experience, as a, a, as an opportunity to grow himself. Uh, I could just give you a video to watch. Don't try to cough up part of my paycheck, boys. I hear you. Okay. Let me see if I can somehow connect. This would be great if I could connect it to the. Take that. Is it not showing to the screen? No, it's just that, uh, like the sub goes. I guess I'm teaching y'all today. Jones is not coming. Jones is not coming. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you new stuff, by the way, but if, if you want. Jones is, not coming. Jones is already here. <laughs> Jones is like the the no, god no. in the room. He's everywhere. You can't he's see him, gonna, but he's there. I'm not gonna say his name, but he said, "Oh, Jones is not coming." All right, fuck this, and I just walked out. And it rhymes with fuss. Right, Baba. I don't. I don't believe that. <laughs> I, bet Gus is, I bet Gus Gus is still there. No, he's probably gonna come back later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, well, there's a lot more people than I thought would come. Uh, You'll do fine. Should I? Should I start? I don't know. Yeah, it's four forty-eight. This is where you tell them all the SDFU. Smart. Okay, so uh, for today. I guess we're, all we're really going to do is just kind of uh, review a little bit more about uh, big O notation. We're going to cut.
<laughs> uh, you don't have to turn. I mean, this is do what you want, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a big O notation, a little bit more on big O notation, a little bit more on sorting algorithms. Turns out that they're pretty common interview questions. So, uh, yeah, learn it. <laughs> learn what it is. Uh, don't be don't be scared when you hear, oh, what's give me an O N, whatever, you know. Don't 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 be surprised when it comes up because it, it will show up. Um, this is not the first time you're going to hear this, or the last time. Uh, but besides that, we're also going to look into more into maps. We're going to review maps, <laughs> and then finally, a new topic. We're going to do binary trees a little bit towards the end. So binary because trees. yeah, binary trees. Uh, so just as a reference, here I'll see if I can. Let's see. I have to like stop sharing here and then. Come over here and share here. <laughs> okay. So just as a reference, it's basically, uh, so we worked on uh, linked lists and we worked on nodes. Those come back. Let's see here. Oh, you guys are all on this. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Let me not do that. I'll set you guys on presenting mode. And I wish I missed the whiteboard. Let's see here. Let me do this. Out. It was working just fine. You got to click on the pen on the left. Uh, there's there's no pen. That's the thing. It, the pen was here a second ago. It's not here anymore. What do you mean? I was like. Hmm. On the left side of the menu, that's below the arrow. Are you clicking that arrow? Where? <laughs> like on the little icon. Oh, these are here? Oh, this little arrow? No, that's for the screen. Yeah, I thought it was for the. You can also, when you're, if you did whiteboards through Zoom, uh, let's see. Oh, it's on view. I can't actually do it myself. Uh, there's a, like on the Zoom bar, it's probably at the top. It allows you to uh, select your writing instrument. On the top? Uh, that didn't have it. Did you click on whiteboards at the, on the bar at the bottom? Yeah. Normally? Uh, I clicked on whiteboards here. It'll, it'll be a pen icon. Yeah. It was, uh, it was like that. Let's see. I made it so you should be able to interrupt yourself going back and forth on Zoom. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, what you could also you could also do if you want to save this entire video is just screen share and then go to your notes and huh? write it out. Or write it like right here. Uh, let me check to see if I can not do it on my iPad at all, and then kind of just do it all through my computer here. It'd be way better. New existing. I mean, the icons get most of them. Yeah, where did the icons go? Did... The left, left side. What the heck? <laughs> Word? I see it over here. I don't know if you can see where my mouse is. I see it over on the left. From the left. It's not appearing on your screen. Huh? Yeah, it's not really appearing on my screen here. Uh, no, I checked the. So go down the board and see if there's like. Oh, you look at the middle part. Yeah. No. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, but you got final one, not the final one. Hey. That's weird. It was just I. I swear it was just working a second ago. Let's see here. Yeah, it works for Jones just fine. So mine's like my bar's over here. I had a bar to choose yeah. from over here on the left. Gotcha. I wonder if I could write on it. Oh no, you have it on. Uh, okay. Right, and it's a client, so you might be able to write on this board since it's my board. Uh, I have access, to, but I'm not able to here. 
Yeah, that's weird. Huh. All right, I'll stop sharing so you can have the screen back. Or actually, I think you're. I'm not sharing. I think it's okay. I I just want to show them. A, I'll just show you up a Google picture, and then you guys will be able to kind of see, see it from there. Um, let's see here. Can you guys see my screen still? No. Yeah, the whiteboard screwed up, so you have to reshare. Okay. Hey, bro, that's not true. <laughs> what the heck? I can't see my mouse now. It's just disappeared. It's right there, but then it disappears as soon as I go up. Look. Oh, it's because it's um. So you, a setting that you have on there, it it merges the mouse onto it. Oh, that's annoying. I don't like that. It's a pebcac error. How do I delete that? I don't want that. <laughs> Hold on, let me rejoin the the Zoom here. That's cute. Let me share my screen. Hello. Okay. Let's jump right in. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump right in. 10 minutes later. Yeah, 10 minutes later. Let's just jump right in. <laughs> let's see here. So we got big O notation. Do you guys have any questions about big O notation or do you guys kind of understand mm -hmm. the idea of it? It makes sense? Everything's... Okay. So, you know, the idea is simple. Uh, you guys want to be able to kind of time yourselves, be able to know how fast uh, or how efficient a sorting algorithm is. If it's very inefficient, why would you use it when you can use something else? Imagine being at Google and you're using something like a, a bubble. It's... you're the lag is going to be insane. And also the memory that it's going to take up is pretty crazy as well. So uh, just kind of uh, keep in mind of these. Uh, there's lots of kinds. There's insertion, selections, bubble, shells, merge, heap, quick. It says quick three, but in reality, there's like tons of quick algorithms. A lot of them are designed specifically for one thing or another. Um, if you go straight into the actual like uh, quick three ways or the quick three here, you can kind of see some uh, some code here. And it more or less kind of tells you the way it works. Uh, why is this important? Because, uh, well, for one, it's going to be on interviews. Uh, if it shows up on an interview, you want to know what you're talking about. You want to know what you're doing. Uh, you don't want people to be like, do this and log, you know, into whatever notation. I don't really care about memory. Just worry about the speed. Um, you'll know what they're talking about then. Uh, I strongly recommend that you guys kind of just do it on your own because uh, you guys kind of already understand how this works. Everything in here about this code is kind of is very, very much already taught to you guys. So you guys should be able to do this and figure it out on your own if you need to. Uh, I recommend, again, strongly just practicing the modules, uh, practicing just as much as you can. It's never a bad thing to practice. Um, let's see here. Next thing that we're going to kind of hit a little bit more is, let's see if we can go back here. Going back into reviewing maps. Uh, maps are really helpful again. Uh, it, it's, it's as quick as it gets. You search up for a specific word or a specific thing, it brings you a specific whatever it is that you store on that word. Uh, think of it like if integer x is equal to 3 and you pull up x, then it pulls up 3. It's that simple. Uh, you don't have to look for it. You don't have to do anything. You just say, hey, look for x, and x is right there. Uh, it's as fast as you can get. In fact, it has a ON notation, meaning that it, it legit takes zero time, virtually zero time. It's, it's as fast as it gets. Not oh. O-N, O-1. Yeah, yeah O-1, sorry. O-1 notation. Um, let's see here. The great thing about uh, the maps is that it can also introduce you into things like hash tables, which we're going to learn on later on, but it can also do or introduce you into things like binary trees, which is the next topic that we're going to talk about. 
Uh, binary trees, think about them as, let's give a good picture here. I would have drawn something, but binary tree. So you can kind of see here how binary trees work. Uh, anyone works really. But essentially, you get the very first number. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it could be one, it could be three, it could be 13, it could be seven. But onto the left of that, is it smaller or is it bigger? Uh, this is actually a weird example, but okay. So it's, uh, let's... That's just showing a binary tree, not a binary search tree. Oh yes, okay, that makes sense. Binary search tree. So this is, again, another method that you can kind of store or look through things. If you look through here, uh, this one's a good example. Uh, is three bigger or smaller than the number eight? Smaller, smaller, smaller. so it goes to the left. Uh, is 10 bigger or smaller to, or bigger than the number eight? Bigger. And it keeps on going that, that way. So you can see here the number eight, followed by the number one. One is smaller than three, so it goes to the left. Six is bigger than three, but it's also smaller than eight, so it goes over here. And it keep, kind of keeps on going and bracketing down. Uh, the way that we code this is using nodes, um, but you can also code it using maps, and you can get to somewhere extremely quickly using the binary tree, or binary search tree, to be exact. So, for example, let's say that I want the number uh, six, but six is stored in a word called hello or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can say search for hello. You can find a search or a sorting algorithm or a search algorithm, and it'll keep going through all of these until it finds hello. And then that hello will pull up the number six. So it's, it's really fast, it's really easy. You can use it, you can implement it um, however you feel, really. Uh, and it gets really crazy with it. Uh, some numbers uh, are really huge and if it's all sorted, it's kind of bad uh, because think about it like this. Uh, let's say there's the numbers one through 10 and they're not scrambled, they're all perfectly sorted. You go one, two is bigger than one, three is bigger than the other one. And it has to go all the way down the line to get to the number 10. Whereas if it's completely scrambled or it's completely balanced, It'll only take about two or three times before it reaches whatever number that is that you need to reach. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so uh, let's review maps one last time. And then towards the end, we'll be able to kind of look into what binary search trees are and we'll code one up. How does that sound? Good, okay. <laughs> let's see here. So let's look at the, the review for the maps. I'm just going to copy all of this. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to add or take anything off. Uh, eventually, we'll be able to do it on our own. And that's kind of the idea. So here we have a structure with a person inside of it. Uh, the person has a first name, a last name, and an H. You can kind of see how everything is in the public because it, it is a structure. Uh, let's go down here. Uh, looks like there's nothing implemented. It's all within the structure person. And here we have two maps, uh, both of them starting with a string. Do you know what those are? Any question? Like, do you know why it's string in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like the name. It's, uh, it's So all of maps are key value pairs. So think about it like a dictionary, right? You go into a dictionary, you look for a word, and the dictionary has the value of the word right next to it. Or in other words, it has the definition, right? So uh, in this case, we have John red for the first one. And that's a person, right? And that's stored within the key John R. So if we were to print out John R, it comes up with John Redden. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So instead of having to like search through it or whatever, all you have to do is, hey, search for John R and it reaches John Redden. Uh, there is drawbacks to it. Uh, for example, suppose that I don't really know the key and I'm just trying to look for the value, uh, then it doesn't really make sense to use a dictionary because you don't really have a key. There's just, you're, you're looking for something, right? Uh, but there is a lot of good things to it. So for example, if you're looking for something specific, you could attach that specific thing into a key and then find the value to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see how this one runs right here. Uh, it's kind of annoying because it's kind of blocking the way here. How do I move this? Oh. Let me guess, the Zoom window is getting in the way? Yeah. <laughs> so let's run it. 
We have an iterator. The iterator is going through the entire map. Starting at the beginning. <laughs> And here you go, 0, 0, 18, 0, 22, 0. So I'm guessing it's the H. Yeah, so here we have the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 18, 22. So what is happening? So the very first one that's printed out is this C out right here, where it says uh, my list, John R, followed by the first name. So that's going to reach, it's basically reaching this whole thing right here. It's treating it kind of like it's the own person, but accessing it through a map. Does that make sense? We're kind of using the same thing that we've been using. This is nothing new. Should be kind of review on maps, um, which is exactly what this whole thing is about in the beginning anyways. Then we have Billy B, which is another new person. Has Bill as a first name and then Bradley as a second name or the last name. And in this case, we coded it so that if we don't put an H, it immediately sets it equal to zero. So again, it equals to zero. And we go kind of through the whole list right here from beginning to end. So the question is, this is kind of a bit of a pop quiz. Can you guys guess why it gave me the ages in this order, 0, 0, 0, 18, 0, 22, 0? Anybody want to guess why I didn't just do like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 18, 22? You have an idea? You initialize the original, right? So 0, 0. What's going on? Right here? No, scroll up on the, on the actual. Yeah, so since you initialized yeah. that, yeah. that's all in the Well, where did my thing go here? So, zero, zero. If you didn't put anything, you just didn't. Put so, you're saying this begin right here? Yeah, so so that starts at the beginning, that cycles uh -huh. through, that cycles through all the way till it gets to right before the end. Uh -huh. And then it accumulates each one. The reason why it's zero is up there, so the construction right there. This right here? The constructor of, of the yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. I'm asking, my question is this right here. Why isn't this, uh, because we, the way that we kind of ordered this or the way that we kind of made this is uh, this one should be zero, this one should be zero, this one's zero, zero, zero. And then this one right here should be 18 and this should be 22. Why isn't it just all zeros and then 18 and then 22 at the end? Instead of, we have this right here. So this 18, where does it belong to? It belongs to this N, right? New, looks like Ned W. And there's Jerry Q. So it doesn't seem to be going in order, right? It doesn't seem to be going in order from what we did first to what we did at the end. Uh, that's because maps aren't necessarily in a, in a sort of array order. order. It's not whatever you put in first, that's what you get next. Does that make sense? It's it's different. It's uh they act different. Uh they're not the they're not in an order. So here we have, let's see. Oh, let's see. So maybe it, it could it could possibly be this right here. Let's do a three right here. Here, let's do one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And let's rerun it. Let's close this one out first. No computer teams. Look at that. Again, just kind of showcasing that, hey, even though these are zeros or whatever, it's not necessarily in order. Don't treat them like an array. They're not an array. Um, you don't just put stuff in it. They're not an array. It's it's a map. Uh, in this case, it's going from 5, 4, 3, 18, 2, 22, 1. So again, it's going out of order. Uh, but it, it must be in some order, right? So what's so special about this one right here? Why did this one come up first? First in the alphabet. Yeah. So what about 4? Four? 4 starts with a J. Why didn't Billy Bob uh, or whatever start out first? Instead of, uh, let's see, instead of came up with four with this J. Any ideas? So, huh? so uh, if you're saying it's the alphabet, Ali starts with an A. B should be for Billy, should be next, right? But it's not. 
And he said it. He said the one's lowercase. Oh. I said that it was lowercase. Yeah, it's a lowercase. Exactly. So th this one's a lowercase. It has to do with, oh, did he say that? Sorry. Yeah. My bad, my bad. Yeah, no worries, it has no to do with the ASCII table. Um, if you look at the ASCII table, uh, I think capital A should be 65. Also, it actually looks through the ASCII values. Yeah, it looks okay. through the ASCII values yeah. and it sorts them in that way inside of the map. So it is in some way, it is sorted. In order, but, but ASCII it's ASCII value yeah. sorted. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go on to the next uh, set of review here, notes. Not much to really review on that one. It's kind of just well. There is a little bit more to review. Like, how do we access the other elements of the the person? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I keep forgetting what review means. Review just means okay, yeah. <laughs> just so, touch on the other. Like, even though it's there, we can add more stuff to it. Yeah. So even yeah, exactly. So even though it's there, we can add more stuff to it. Um, somebody give me a name here. Ronald. Okay, so what should be the key for the Ronald? <laughs> we'll do Mickey, Mickey D. <laughs> let's do Mickey D, and it's equal to new person. And in this case, we're gonna, we call them Ronald, whose last name is McDonald. <laughs> Right. And he's for whatever reason negative four years old. Okay. And if I wanted to print them out, any ideas how to print them out? It's a map, so that should be a pretty big clue. Key value pairs. Like see how my list uh close. Um so what exactly is happening when we're accessing uh, something like this? So what exactly does Mickey D hold? This is the key. The key is Mickey D. What is Mickey D holding? Right, but all you see, they're going to be selling what, Krispy Kremes. A person. I heard that. Who said that? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's a person. Yes. So we're not accessing the name itself or the last name or the age. We're accessing the entire thing. Notice how it's equal to new person, not just Ronald or McDonald or negative four. It's actually the entire person. So if we want to get to the person's first name, how do we get to a person's first name? Point to it. Yeah, it's that easy. Why? Because we're using new, which means that everything is at runtime. So here we have new list. We're going to call him Mickey D. Or we already call him Mickey D. We're going to set him. Um, Dot. And notice here how if I put the dot operator, it shows up age, first name, last name. It should be the pointer operator, but that's just what I use because it pops up. But let's do his first name here. Forgot the Y. Thank you. I just want the first name right now. So this should print out Mickey D dot first name, which again is Ronald. Yeah. Does that guys give you a better idea of how they, they are used? Yeah. So this works for classes. And this works for pretty much most objects, really. Um, if you want, you can fit up. Uh, it doesn't have to be just uh, persons. Right, it doesn't have to be just that class. It could be different classes, uh, but you just have to make I sure have a you... question, Mr. SI. Yes. On the Mickey D, we were able to just do the arrow pointer for first name, but in the iterator, we have, it says second and then age. Can we just get rid of the second? Right here? Yeah. No, no, we're not. So why can't we do that? Why does age, why does first name work down below, but age doesn't work like that there. Let's see here. So this is my iterator second. Oh, so th this goes back into iterators. So let's look at what an iterator is. Um, let's see here.
iterator C++. So this goes back into how iterators behave in C++. Um, so do you guys remember what an iterator is? It's like a pointer that just moves on. It iterates. It iterates over. Yeah, you can point it at one and point it at the next thing. Whatever is inside of that container, it'll point at. Right? So Professor Jones here pointed out a very cool thing. There is a second. That's this right here. And he was asking, uh, what exactly does it do? Why, why, why do we need the second? Why is it there? Right? So in this case, this iterator is pointing at a map. And the map has two different things. Uh, what does it have in this case? So it has uh, the point of the river and then the point of the river. What's that? So it has <coughs> the starting right there and then it has the edge. So yeah. it points to each and every one. Yeah, it. so it's a, it's a key value pair, it's right? It's a node. Yeah, it's, it's basically kind of like a node. Uh, not exactly a node, but, but it is a, it does have a key value pair. It has two different things. It has a key and it has a value, right? So the key word here in this case would be the string that we have. It could also be an integer. It could be a double. In this case, it makes more sense to put it as a string, but really it could be anything you want it to be. Um, just you know, be careful with that. If you do Booleans, you'll only be able to use true and false, and then you'll have no other names and no other keys, right? Um, and you can store whatever you want inside of it, the value. So in this case, uh, an iterator has the ability to be able to choose at the second one, or in other words, uh, not the very first string or the key, it's choosing whatever the value has inside of it. And that's the kind of the second value that it is. So for example, uh, in this, notice here, we didn't really choose, um, we didn't really choose this. We didn't, we, we didn't, we didn't use this to print out this whole thing right here. We used second and then age. And again, it's because it's looking at the map, it's iterating through the map, and the map has a bunch of, uh, it's an iterator that's pointing at a bunch of different maps. I wish I could draw on the whiteboard because I, I, I feel like I'm relying on it too much now. Uh, but think about it like we have this box. Uh, this box contains two different things that has a key and a value pair, right? It has a key and a value. If you say dot second, it points to the second thing inside of that box. In other words, the value. Does that make sense? So in this case, we're saying, hey, that value, which is a person, I want you to get the age out of it. And that's kind of what happens. So if we take away the second right here, like this, this is assuming that you're pointing at the very first thing, which doesn't really make sense because the first thing is a key. Yeah, exactly. It's a key. You can't get the key and then say, get the age from the key. It doesn't make sense. Right? We have to access the key, which in this case is the second, and then get the H. Awesome. Uh, you guys have any questions on that? So in this case, is the value the first thing possible? Yes, exactly. So in this case, if we look up at the very top, we have a person pointer, and the key is a string. That's kind of where we have all of these keys right here. And all of this that's equal to it is its value. And in this case, it's a new person, meaning that in this case, we're going to use person pointers. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to use, for example, the second name, using the iterator, how would we get to the second name, the last name? Yeah, exactly. But we're in this case using the my iterator, right? So we're using map, itr dot and it has a bunch of different things but in this case what are we choosing second and why second yeah exactly yeah see you guys are getting it okay perfect and then finally it says age first name and last name we want the last name exactly so we do the last name here we run it we get in we call it a day that's awesome <laughs> So this is great. Uh, it's another instance of why iterators are so very powerful. <laughs> uh, we can use it on basically just about every sort of data type, including data types that you make. So for example, objects, uh, in this case, persons. Right? Very, very useful. Don't be afraid of them. They're going to come up again and again and again. You're going to get used to them. All right. Uh, let's go to the second set of notes here. A little bit longer.
So again, here we have this uh, user information, user info, and it's a class. And in this case, uh, we do have uh, implementation at the bottom. And it's holding a display name, a user password, and a phone number. So it's a user's information. And down below, we have just ways to kind of display them and to access or put them straight through. In this case, we're not using get set methods. So uh, we're going straight into them. Uh, not exactly the most proper programming, especially since we're using uh, private variables. So we want to use get set methods, but it does the job. Uh, in this case, uh, we're using it to display more iterators and maps. So here it says, in the main populated the database at runtime with the user information. So here again, it's just using a different, uh, kind of very similar thing. Uh, my database, which is the name of the map, and it has John R, and John R in this case is what? Yeah, exactly. It's 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 the it's the key. And then right next to it, it says new user information. So that means that must be the yeah the value. So again, remember that very carefully. Key value pairs. Key value. There's a key, and then there's a value. In this case, John R is the key. The new user info is the value. It's an easy way to remember it. Um, you guys will be good <laughs> if you guys if you guys remember that way. In this case, we're again just using John R database John R. So again, we're just accessing this whole new thing right here, using it like this, and then saying display user information. So in this case, it should display the uh, John Redden, and in this case, those numbers right there. And then we do the same thing for Billy Billy B and James J. We set up a iterator. In this case, it's called it. That's at the very top. And in this case, uh, it points to another map that has a string and a user information, which makes sense because we're going to end up pointing it to this map right here. So we want these to equal in order to access them, right? If we have them different and we're trying to make it point to that, it won't make sense. It's like, hey, I'm trying to get this and you're giving me this, right? Here we have a while loop, and it says, hey, while it's is not to the base on my database dot end, again, going back into iterators, uh, that dot end operator just means, hey, as long as you don't reach the very end of this whole container, in this case, the maps, then you're going to keep on doing this. And it's going to display the first one. And again, do you guys remember what the first is? The key. Yeah, exactly. So this should be the key, followed by, and this says dot second display user info. So what should that do? Yeah, display the info. So it follows first with the key and then ends up with the actual value. Does that make sense? And then we have the system.pause. Uh, <laughs> uh, during my SIs, I, I usually try to stray away from it because a lot of you guys have MacBooks and it usually only works with Windows. But basically it says, hey, pause until it pretty much keeps going. Actually, hold on. I might be thinking of something else. Professor Jones, I'm here. This system dot pause thing right here. Uh, what does it do again? It it puts a little uh, delay on the output of the screen that the user screen, so that they have to hit any key to continue. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so let's run it. Let's see what happens. So here we have a uh, John Redden one two three four five again, displaying this very first part. John R with the display user info. That's where this comes from. Let's see here, and then it follows up with Billy B Bradley Bradley or Bill Bradley followed by all of this James J. So again, all of this Bill B James J John R all of those are keys. And again, it is showing them, and it makes sense because we're using that first right here. So let's continue and press J here, and it finally ends. Awesome. So let's actually add a couple more. Uh, anybody want to help me out here? Yeah, Hefe. Hefe. All right. 
my database, we'll call it Hefe with a capital J. Well, yeah, lowercase j is just insulting. <laughs> and Hefe is real name is David Jones. Damn, just out me. <laughs> and his password's gonna be one, two, three, four, because he doesn't know any better. Zero zero seven ass hat. <laughs> I'm at least creative enough to go four three two one. Or you do like one of these, where you just go down the keyboard. Oh God, no! <laughs> but in this case, we create a new one. Uh, it's called David Jones, with his password being one Q A Z two W S X. Again, what is the key here? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and in this case, the value would be. His gloriousness. Almost. That's not necessarily what it's pointing at. If I were to print out the second one, it's not going to print that out. Why? <laughs> Why doesn't it? Uh, you said that it, it contains David Jones and 1QAC, 2WSX. That's only semi-true. Uh, what it's really pointing at is this whole entire person. So if you wanted to print out the entire person, you can, but it's just going to give you an address. Uh, because it's a pointer. If you want to print out the actual names itself, you have to use them through the act checker. So again, this is just basically replacing it and saying, hey, this uh, kind of like a variable. My uh, Let's call it integer x is equal to 5. If I print out x, it's going to get you 5 because that's what it's containing. In this case, this x is containing this whole new user info, right? Which means that in order to access the stuff inside of it, you have to use the dot operator because we're using it. Uh, hence, uh, if you do first right here, it's going to print out this part. If you do second, what is it? What do, what do you guys think is going to happen here? Probably a weird address, yeah. So let's run it. Yeah, so we have a bunch of weird addresses. And it's because we're doing second, but hey, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. You're just saying, hey, this new user person. So you have to specify what exactly you're trying to reach. I have a question for you. Yeah. Scroll back up to the class for the user info. It has a phone number with an integer format, but there's no pre-constructor to it. How can I add someone's phone number using this map string for someone that's already existing without adding a constructor that has it? That's a good question. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I, didn't, I guess I didn't really read it all the way through. Okay. So in this case... I'm prompting you here. <laughs> we have the display name, we have the user password, which makes sense. Uh, if we go down to its actual implementation, we have display name and user password, but then we have this whole user number right here, phone number, uh, it's not really there. <coughs> Can we edit something inside uh, of, a, of a class through maps? That's the question. Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's pretty easy, actually. Um, Along the same way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's along the same way. So you indirectly access it through maps, and then you pretty much work with it then. So for example, uh, let's say that Jarn's R is written. We're gonna we're gonna out him here. Professor Redden. Let's access him. My database dot or we're gonna say John R. So again, if I do this operator right here, this is accessing the user. So in this case, we want to access not his uh, display user info, but his password, or not his password, his uh, phone number. Here it is. Why isn't it not coming up? Let's figure this is it out here. Private? What's that? Is it private? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. We might need to make an access or method for it real quick. 
Yeah. I didn't notice that until I prompted the idea to let's do it. So let's do it. That's okay. Method here. Not that long. Yep. Let's do void. Uh, let's do a get. Get number. Uh, get phone. In this case, it's going to phone number. Oops. I don't know why I did that. Wait. No, this is void. This isn't. Void. Set phone. And here we're going to do a I guess we could have done it within the same thing, but proper implementation. <laughs> Let's do return. In this case, it's called. So there isn't some like crazy way we can override this language. No, that that's kind of what that's what it means to be private. Yeah. This is phone number is equal to org. Okay, awesome. <laughs> you guys need time with that or some time? Okay. Um, yeah, all we all we did is a get set method, but specifically only for the phone number, and then nothing else. All set? Okay. So John Redden, he doesn't have a number. Uh, let's give him one. So uh, here we have John R. I want to pull up his name first. So uh, by key in this case. So his key is John R. And all of a sudden we have the get phone and the set phone because that's kind of what we did. <laughs> Uh, so here, in this case, we're going to set the phone number. And inside of here, we're going to put his number. Uh, five, five, nine, zero, zero, oops, zero, 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 zero. He's a first number in the area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let's say that I want to see out his number uh, because I'm weird. I don't know. So any ideas on how to do that? Let's say that I only want his number. Uh, there, I don't have six is in two problems. ways. What's that? Huh? Yeah, there's a second, but that's using iterators. Uh, if we want to use the key itself, how do we do it? OK, so here, like this. Uh, in this case, it's database. John R dot would it just be in this case get phone oh. get phone returns the phone number set phone just pretty much sets it uh so I, I think there's a little bit of confusion on, on the second part uh, second is specifically only for iterators it, it belongs to the iterator uh thing itself only so it's so only when you're using that form with the iterator. Because when you want to iterate, it, you want to go from like the beginning to end to the actual way the map itself works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it's only specifically for iterators. Uh, if you if you try to access dot second on a map, uh, probably not gonna not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> you want to use it with the uh, with whatever it is that you're using here. So in this case, it doesn't really show up. Kind of like though in the computer five, the five zero. I want five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's do <laughs> seconds on iterator. C plus plus. 
uh, Stack Overflow. Pretty good way to find your answers here. <laughs> uh, don't copy. <laughs> so in this case, we have uh, uh, this other container called an, a pair. And it has a first and a second member, which makes sense. It's a pair. So if you get the first one, it's going to reach or access the very first one using the iterator. If you use the second, it's going to reach the second part of the pair. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, we also have a kind of a pair, but instead we have a key value pair. Does that make sense? So in this case, the very first one is going to throw up the key. <coughs> the second one is going to show up the value. Again, this is only for iterators. Don't try to use second using the key value like by itself. Yeah, don't don't confuse them, both of them. <laughs> okay, let's run this code. And there you go. John right in. One, two, three, four, five. Wait a minute. Yeah, it should be five five nine. Oh, it's I didn't. What's that? Oh, it, it's not in the while loop at all. It's outside of the while loop right here. Uh, let's try this again. See here. So it should show. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's do some couts in line. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it at the end as well. Oops. Let's cancel this one. And it's giving me these. Why is it giving me these? Oh, it's set on. Okay, that makes sense. No, wait, no, that's right. Set phone dot get phone. What's that? If I have any other screen, I think we can write this in the bottom. We can shorten it. Let's do just 559. That's his new phone number. There it is. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> I haven't had that happen to me before, so. Yeah, you can use or like long integer or whatever. Yeah. Multiple ways are good around it. Five five nine zero zero zero. There it is. Yeah. All right. You guys have any questions? Everything kind of understanding maps now? What's that? <laughs> what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to go into trees, I recommend don't doing the, just do the binary tree for now. Yeah, okay. Because it's yeah. enough to set up without doing the search. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see here. Baby steps. You know, Gus Baby Gus steps. needs his handheld. <laughs> Gus is gone. He's not here. That doesn't matter. It doesn't take away from the fun. Yeah, it's still fun and funny to make fun of him. <laughs> Okay. Oops, wrong one. While he's doing that, Osbaldo, congratulations. Oh, yeah. I got the oh, notification. Where, where he's on he's on Zoom. Oh. I got the notification and email saying that you'll be busy on the 17th to the 24th. And to work with you if you can, uh email me later on. We'll talk about when you can do your second test, which was originally scheduled for the 17th, but I don't want to interfere with your your NASA adventure. That's 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 clutch. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Binary trees. Uh, 
personally, my favorite part of the of the whole class. Let's see here. I don't know why I find them fun either. They're not they're not that hard. It's just kind of fun to just kind of draw them. You can kind of turn off your brain and then just kind of go on. <laughs> just kind of make it. Yeah. Let's see here. The, there's a kind of a whole science to it uh, because again, uh, looking back at these binary tree search search trees, uh, we have this number eight. Uh, the number eight uh, is then followed by the number three. Is three larger or smaller than eight? It's smaller, so it goes to the left. Anything smaller than the number that it's talking about goes to the left. I would say goes to the right. Does that make sense? Uh, so in this case, uh, the worst possible case that you can have is when everything is completely sorted out from smallest to biggest, because or from biggest to smallest, because then it just goes one straight line all the way through, where it's just left, 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 and it keeps on going like that until the end. So for example, one through 10 would be one left, or in this case, right, two, right, three, right, four, and it just keeps on going. Pretty bad, really imbalanced. If you get to the number seven, you have to go seven down, and the levels just keep going more and more. Having a random. Yeah, having it exactly. Mm -hmm. Or even better, having them perfectly almost balanced. <laughs> so like having the number five in the beginning and then splitting those into uh, the number five followed by the number three and the number seven, and then keep going down like that. Uh, way more efficient. And again, you can use the sorting algorithm for that and then just kind of put it in the tree and make it really quick. Let's look here. So let's take a quick look at the notes just to see kind of how it works. This is kind of a new introduction here. Or honestly, we can we can kind of build it. Do you guys want to build it from scratch? Yes. yes. Okay. You want to build it from, okay. Okay, you guys are way too quick with that. Okay. Uh, let's do it from scratch. Axmon actually had a lot of from scratch stuff. Most the of the notes? stuff was not filled in. You looked at it. Are you talking about the notes? Yeah, you looked at it. A lot of it's empty. Print function, question mark. Add node, question mark. Oh, true. Oh, but everybody seems so excited to do it from scratch. Go for <laughs> it. Okay, we're going to do it from scratch. So again, this reintroduces the concept of nodes and why they're powerful. So if you hate nodes, sorry. Um, but at least it'll kind of uh, uh, give you some more practice on it. So we start off our code using the same old same mode. STD. And let's do int main void. There we go. And let's start making a very basic node class. Node. Where inside of the private, we're going to have uh, two different variables instead of node pointer. Well, we're still going to use node pointer. So I guess three different things. We're going to have a node pointer pointing to the left and a node pointer pointing to the right. Let's do our accessor methods or whatever. And uh, what do we want to have inside of these nodes? We don't want it to just point at each other and do nothing. Uh, what should we have? Values. Yeah, our values, but like what type of values? Like a Data? Data? <laughs> um, right, strings, integers. Integers? Integers? Integer, okay, okay, cool. Let's do integers. We'll call it integer value. There we go. And we'll call this right here. We'll do our constructor here in a moment. Let's start get set values. So void set node or not node set left. So here set left, and here's going to be a node node pointer. We're going to call it arg. Void get left. Oops. <laughs> node pointer get left and here we're going to hit a void
node pointer org. Yeah, yeah, you're right, probably. You're like, come on, one, hurry up. We haven't got all day. Okay. There we go. Let's copy this right here. Come over here and start implementing. Awesome. Here we're going to have left is equal to org. Return left. Right is equal to org. Return right. And let's just make a very simple one here for our value. We're going to have integer my value. Or we can do a value org or val org if you're, if you're lame, I guess. <laughs> that's looks like we forgot one yeah we forgot one more so here we're going to do void sets value enter r and then int yeah, value. There you Um, yeah, uh, I, I'll wait a second for you guys there. Can I get up here? Let me know if you guys need me to scroll up or down. All set? All good, dude? <laughs> well, my thing is acting a little bit. Well, it's what you type with. That's right. Oh, uh, I just wasn't.
Uh, all set. Well, let's talk about it. We have a node. This node pointer has a left and a right, kind of like uh, the node that the for w link list where it had a previous and a front. In this case, we have a left and a right. Make sense? Uh, in this case, it has a value. The value has an integer. And the idea is, or the design here, is to make the integers uh, go from small to big in a particular order. We can have negatives if you want. Uh, let's get to it. Yeah. So uh, we could create a class for the binary tree itself. But for right now, let's just do it from scratch because we're kind of running out of time. Uh, so how do we do this? Let's see. Hmm. How about how about we start off with a single node, just the very head of the node? Uh, anybody want to give me a random number? Forty-seven. What's that? Forty-seven. Forty-seven works. Sorry, kind of or eleven. We, we use eleven next. Yeah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Is it fifty-eight? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure, dude. <laughs> Whatever fuzzy bones or whatever. <laughs> Let's do this at runtime because we're grown ups now. <laughs> so let's do a new node pointer. Let's call this one a uh, my node. We'll call it cur. Node pointer cur is equal to a new node. And this new node, we're going to use a constructor. You said 58. <coughs> we'll call this on the head. And similar idea, we don't want to lose track of the head. If we lose track of the head, we don't have a head anymore. There's no way to access it anymore. Kind of like a singly linked list that only goes down, but it also branches off. Does that make sense? Okay. 38? OK, so is 38. Let's create a new node pointer here real quick. Node pointer, we'll call it cur. And it's equal to nothing right now. Or actually, we'll, we'll equal it to the head. So here we have two nodes, or no, just a single node, and two node pointers pointing at that same node. We have head, which is never going to move from that very top. And then finally, we have the current, right? So uh, somebody said another number. What was it? Uh, anybody, any numbers? Any at all? Doesn't 17. matter. 17 works. Awesome. OK. So is 17 greater or smaller than? Smaller. Smaller. OK, so that means it's going to go to where? Left or right? Left. left. Perfect. Awesome. OK, so this means let's get curve dots left. In this case, we're setting the left to a new node. And this node right here is going to contain the number. What number? You said 17. Perfect. And man, I, I wish this whiteboard thing would work. It might be easier if you use the numbers that are in the notes. Because there's oh, a tree yeah. listed there. Oh, yeah. There, there's a tree. Yeah, OK. Let, oh, you can do that tree here. right there. Yeah, let's use this tree right here. So we'll start off with the number 8. Followed by the number 3. And again, uh, because of how we designed it, we don't have to set them to null pointers at the very end, because we already did that. We, already, we did that in the constructor. We said, hey, whenever you use a constructor, uh, I want the left value and the right value to be a null pointer, unless I change it otherwise manually. Does that make sense? So in this case, we have the head pointer. In this case, it has the number eight. This side, it has number three. Does that make sense? And then on this side, it's kind of blocked off. And then from the three, it's blocked off because it has two little arms as well, left and right. So the very next number that we have here is, uh, let's do 10. So it's 10 bigger than or smaller than 8, larger. So it's going to go on what side? The right. The right, exactly. So if we say cur dot right right here, what exactly will happen? Well, get right ain't going to get you shit. What happened? Get right is not going to do anything. Oh, true, 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 true. 
in this case it's 10. Awesome. Let's look at the very next number. So we have three, we have 10. Next number, we're going this way. Let's do 10, one, I mean. So we have one. We look at the very top. Do we say, hey, is eight smaller or bigger than the number one? Bigger. So that means that one goes to the left. OK. And then what's to the left of the number 10? Or in this case, number eight, I'm sorry. There's already something there. We, we, we said it right here. To the left of it, huh? Three, okay, so is one bigger or smaller than the number three? Smaller, so it goes to the left of three, exactly. So first we have to access that node three and then say to the left of your that three right there, I want you to put the number one. So what's the way that we can kind of do that? Three. Yeah, okay, so why get left? Why not just say, hey, left, be one? That's exactly right. Yeah, we want to iterate over to the very next node because as of right now, we're still standing on that number eight and we're kind of just saying, hey, put it right there. If we say go left and put left number one, what it's going to happen is that it's going to replace that number three right here that we have on the left already. And then it's just going to say, hey, get rid of that three. That three is no longer accessible. There's no way to get to it because there's no point of pointing at it. And it's just existing in memory with memory without a way to get to it. Does that make sense? So we want to get through the three and then finally, once we get to the three, we want to say, okay, to the left of that, put number one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. So you said uh, we access it. So in this case, we're going to get left. Oops. Cur is equal to cur.get left. And now we're on the number three. Now, if we say cur.get left and then we put the number one, it'll make sense, right? So if we say cur dots. Set left. Oops. <coughs> this is a new node. Does that kind of make sense where we're at right now? So I'll put up the visual. Head is still pointing at eight, never going to move. Cur is now currently at the number three. And it says get left or set left to number one. Does that make sense? Right now, this one's still blocked off, it has null. But we're already here at number three. We could go back to the very head and then do this right here, number 14. But let's just do number six right here because we're already here. It makes more sense, right? So how do we get to this number six right here? We're currently at number three. Is it to the left or the right? To the right. OK, so we say set rights to a new node that contains the number. Exactly. Yeah. So let's look at this right here. Per dots set right. And this will contain the new node. In this case, we're doing the number six. Awesome. Now, again, we could move on back to number eight and then go to number 10 and then do 14, but we're already at number three. Doesn't it make more sense to go to number six and finish the four and seven rather than go all the way to the top and then back down? Yeah, right. So how do we access that number six? How do we get to it? Because currently, Kerr is currently pointing at the number three. So how do we make it point at the number six? Yeah, not get next, but in this case, what? No, not set. There's no next. Right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's important. Again, I don't want to confuse you because when you go back home and you're trying to make a binary tree, you're going to be like, what did one say again? Okay, so <laughs> cur is going to equal cur dot get right. And now we're currently pointing at that number six, that node that contains the number six. Does that make sense? This is good stuff here. This, this is fun. Come on, guys. <laughs> Okay, so to the left and to the right, we have uh, four and seven. Where's four belonging to? And then seven means it's going to the right. Okay, so again, those are new nodes. Every circle that you see is basically a node containing a number inside of it. So in this case, this is a node. Inside of the node is the four. 
So here we have her dots set left. Any ideas what we're setting inside? Same process, not, not a trick question. New node. And inside of it, we're having four. Awesome sauce. Her dot. And then the next order of business is, yep, set right. And inside we're having new node, right? New node with the number seven. Okay. We finished a whole side already. We're pretty much done with one whole side. We still need the last side, the one that can, contains uh, the 10, the 14, and the 13. How do we get to the very top? Yeah, there's an anchor there. We have head there at the very top. We don't want to move head because as soon as we move head, there's no way to access that number 10 anymore or that number eight. Does that make sense? So that's kind of our respawn point. Let's go back to spawn. I, re I love that. <laughs> We're back at That's spawn. The bonfire. <laughs> <clears throat> We're back at spawn. Kerr is now equal to head, which means that Kerr is currently pointing at the node containing the number eight. And do we already have something on number 10 on the on the left side? We do. That's the that's the second thing we did, right? So how do we get to number 14 and 13? Yeah, so we're gonna do Kerr is gonna equal Kerr dots. Get right. And now it's currently pointing out the number 10. And let's look at the next number. The next number is currently 14. So is 14 greater than or smaller than 10? Larger. So is it going left or right? Right. Awesome. You guys are walking me through it. I don't even have to do my job anymore. Set right. And we said what number? 13 or 14? 14? Okay. Why doesn't this work? Yes, thank you. Yes, you guys are you guys are still here with me. That's awesome. Okay. New node. 13, 14. All right. Must be nice to have student interaction in class. Yeah. It is nice. <laughs> Fucking jealous. <laughs> It's like pulling teeth when I'm up there. <laughs> okay. We set out the number 14. Um, we could get to the number 13. Oh, well, we still need it. So yeah. how do we do that? Uh-huh. Well, look at 10. We're at 10 right now, right? Yeah. Okay. If we go left, if we go left right here, there's nothing over here. Yeah. So we don't want to get left. In this case, we want to get right. Get right. Exactly. Okay. Get right. Yeah, exactly. So you can actually do that that way as well. Yeah. So let, let, let's actually see it just so we can. Uh... We don't necessarily have to do iterate. Uh... So his idea is saying, hey, um, why do we even have to uh, move over here and then finally be able to go over here when well, we can just directly go get this and then make this right here? You could do that. Um, if you want to, no, you, you can, you can do it. In fact, you can do the whole thing right here and then just say, get left, get left. And then set right. You can do that. You can do that. You can. It's just, uh, whenever you start automating things, not the clearest pattern. The pattern is clear now because all we're doing is moving over. Is it greater or smaller? Okay. Moving over. Is it greater or smaller? Okay. Moving over. But whenever we're doing something like, uh, uh, we're doing everything by hand. We could, if we want to, just start right here and then say left, right, left, and then get to the number four. Picture a, a tree of a hundred elements in it. Yeah, but picture a tree of a hundred elements and you want to automate it? I'd rather automate it. <laughs> especially if it's not balanced, as we'll talk yeah, about on Yeah, especially if it's not balanced, yeah. Okay. So currently, cur is equal to cur.get right, and then cur.set rights is 14. So uh, just to kind of prove that we can do that as proof of concept, we're just going to do it the way that you said, uh, get left and then set right. Get left, dots. Set right. 
and it's going to be a new node with the number 13 inside of it. And there you go. Yeah, it's not going to work. Let's see. You want to do current get right and then set left. Current get rights. Oh, true, 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 true. Did I switch the order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did switch the order. Get rights. Set left. There you go. Um, good introduction to binary trees. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, my essay is continuing, uh, but you guys are free to leave. That's pretty much as much as I'm, I'm done for. Juan, if, if you can copy and paste that in an announcement, I will build on it on uh, Wednesday. What's that? If you copy and paste that in an announcement or email it to me and I'll do it, I'll I'll build on that on Wednesday since that's the notes everyone started using. Okay. Uh, I'll email it to you. I don't know if you want to leave any other messages, so I'll just email it to you. Do you want the .cbb file or do you prefer just copy and paste? Just copy and paste. Okay. I will stop recording so that you're able to go about your business. Oh, true.